Thank you for tuning in to Macro View Television and welcome to a brand new edition of Taiwan Outlook, the program that presents the different faces and lets you hear about their stories on Taiwan. I'm your host, Wu Rei Guo. Have you ever been on a low cost carrier before? Are you going to be a repeat customer or one time is enough for you? We're going to find out more about low cost carriers. LCCs on today's program because we are delighted to have as our special guest Mr. Stephen Greenway, who's the head of commercial of Scoot Private Limited, a low cost air, uh, carrier based in Singapore. Welcome to our program, Stephen. Thank you, Raymond. Okay. It's a pleasure to have you on the program, it's Stephen. It's great to be here. Great to be back in Taipei and Taiwan. Uh, okay, you're based in Singapore, right? Based in Singapore. I've been uh, in Singapore for almost five years okay. uh, when uh, we started Scoot back, uh, back that time. Yeah. All right. And we're going to ask you to start off today's program by telling us a little bit about yourself. Okay. I understand that you spent a number of years in the airline di industries, yes. Yes. most of which with low-cost carriers. Yes. So tell us a little bit about what you have done prior to Scoot. Sure. Um, my specialty. I suppose is uh, starting up airlines. So okay. I've started oh, up uh, five airlines with Scoot being the fifth. So mm -hmm. uh, it's been a, an interesting career in terms mm -hmm. of uh, being around the world. I've lived in Eastern Europe, I've lived in really? the UK, I've lived in the Middle East and, and Asia as well. Okay. So I've been very fortunate in that respect. But Good. my primary speciality yeah, has been starting up low cost carriers. Um, oh. But I've also worked for full service carriers as well. So I have Good. a um, um, I suppose a perspective on both uh, both, both models yeah. as well. Okay, yeah. good. All right. And uh, Steve, I'm going to ask you: Can you give us a brief definition of what is a low-cost carrier? Mm. You know, people. You know, first thing comes to mind is, well, the tickets are cheaper. Yep. <laughs> All right. Yep. And then it's the same service. Yes. You know, you're probably not going to get as many benefit. You yes. know, benefits. But um, what, what's the actual definition? Sure. that you can give us. And also, what are some of the characteristics? Sure. I think there's really two things that make up a low-cost carrier. Um, okay. The first is efficiency. Um, okay. uh, low-cost carriers really work on driving uh, uh, the, the business model as efficiently as possible. Mm. An example of that would be we only usually have one aircraft type, not uh, five or six. Okay. Why? Because it's easier to maintain, easier to train your staff. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a more simplistic model. Mm -hmm. uh, we also fly our aircraft longer. Um, oh, so they okay. fly more hours during the day than typical other carriers. So okay. it just as a flavor of efficiency. Okay. On the other side, on the consumer side, what they really see is the basics. You yeah. only get to buy a seat. Yeah. And everything else typically comes on at, a, at an add-on. Okay. So it's 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 about empowerment. It's about choosing what you as a consumer want as okay. opposed to what you're told to have. Okay. So I think that that that's the beauty of the model. You only pay for what you, you want, you and that's that's where the two big differences. So it's really efficiency and paying for what you want. They're okay. the, probably the two key drivers that underpin a, a low-cost carrier. Okay. Can you also give us a brief background history mm. and the development path sure. for low-cost areas uh, sure. carriers? Um, they really started in the United States. I don't know if you've okay. heard of Southwest. Um, yes. That's been around for many decades now. Yes. And that then spread to Europe. And the reason why it spread to Europe is Europe became a common sky. Oh, it became okay. uh, the whole of Europe was a, uh, became mm -hmm. basically a domestic um, uh, market. Yes. So if mm -hmm. I was a UK-based carrier. I could fly anywhere within Europe I wanted. Mm -hmm. I could set up bases overseas, all of that type of stuff. So okay. it went from the US, transplanted to uh, to Europe, and now it's coming through Asia. And it's been okay. in Asia for you know uh, over a decade now, and we've yes. got some large carriers here. Yeah. But it's still in my mind in its infancy. You're still seeing new carriers um, being created or starting up over the past couple of years. Okay. Mm. And why do you think the model has been so successful in Europe? Um, I think it's been successful because airfares were so high. <laughs> so, you know, people really, travel it, so much in it, Europe. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And um, it really, it mm. really uh, comes down to the fact that um, for such a long time, airfares, air travel was very, very expensive mm -hmm. within Europe. And low-cost carriers came in, and they didn't steal people. They didn't okay. steal customers from other. Away. They stimulated yeah. a new market. They stimulated a market that didn't exist, and yes. that's what you see today. Okay, so me more people now choose to fly absolutely instead of you know maybe in the past they would drive. Yes, uh, they would take the train in yes. Europe, for example. Well, you, you look much younger than I do, but I mean, <laughs> I, I remember when I was growing up, you would get a rail pass and you would travel around Europe on exactly. by rail because yes. that was really the only affordable option. Mm -hmm. Today, you know, people who are in their twenties and stuff, they go backpack in Europe and they catch flights everywhere because it's so cheap you know yes. in 20 years mm -hmm. things have completely changed okay mm. with the emergence of low-cost carriers mm. how do you think the whole airline industry is now different 
because of it. Yeah, um, I think it's made uh, traditional carriers, mm -hmm. um, full service carriers wake up uh, okay. and, and attempt to adapt. Um, okay. And I think that some of them are struggling, some of them are succeeding, it depends. Okay. And sometimes full service carriers start up their own low cost carrier uh, yes. as an answer to... Yeah, as the case to, in Taiwan. Exactly. Well. Mm -hmm. And also the case for us, I mean, because we're mm -hmm. owned obviously by Singapore Airlines mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you see a combination of strategies, of full service strategies and Mm -hmm. and low-cost strategies, but okay. the, the low-cost carry really has shaken up the market. And it started with short-haul flights, you know, flights of two, three hours at the most. Mm -hmm. And now what we're seeing, particularly in the case of Scoop, that it's gone from two, three hours right up to eight, nine, ten hours. Mm -hmm. People would okay. travel low-cost carriers only on short-haul, but now they're completely okay travelling on long-haul as well, which okay. is the case for Scoop. Okay. And uh, given the fact that, you know, this is a you know, brand new business model, mm -hmm. do you think in the future prospects, that it's going to be successful in Asia mm. as it was in Europe? Um, I think you've got a, a, some small examples, not small examples, a few examples of success. Um, mm. you know, there's been Jetstar, AirAsia, et cetera. They're of quite a significant scale and they're having some, mm -hmm. a good degree of success. Okay. I, I personally believe, and I've seen it in many markets, you know, there's mm -hmm. always a bit of scepticism. Is it going to be successful? Is it not? Well, guess what? The largest carrier in Europe now is Ryanair. Uh, so within the space of less than 20 years, mm -hmm. they've become bigger than airlines that have been around for 60, 70 years like Lufthansa and British Airways. Mm -hmm. Last year alone, they carried over 100 million people. Yes. And so it will just happen. It will happen in different ways. Asia is probably a bit slower because we don't have a common sky like mm -hmm. Europe or the United States, mm -hmm. but it will happen. Even in Singapore 10 years ago, low yeah. cost traffic was nothing. No. Now it's over 30%. So, you know, um, Taiwan is late that to that show. It's, yes, you know, yeah. um, well, late comer. Yeah, late comer, but what we, I think you'll see rapid growth. You've even okay. got now, two years ago, you had no low-cost carriers domestically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you have two. Okay. Um, so, you know, it, it will change. All right. And, Stephen, you know, when you operate an airline, mm. you cannot operate in vacuum. Yes. You've got to, you know, pay attention to the international environment. Yep. Of course, speaking of today, you know, in the beginning part of 2016, mm. We're looking at, you know, the cost of fuel, mm. oil, and, yes. you know, Record less lives. than $30, $30 U.S. per barrel. I know. Is that going to be having an impact on LCCs? Mm -hmm. Because now, you know, maybe the regular full-service airlines are coming down with their prices as sure. well because the fuel is cheaper. Yeah, of course. Uh, do you think that's additional competition or some unknown factors for the LCCs to mm. deal with? A very good question. Mm. I think it's all relative. Cost, okay. uh, the cost of fuel to us, to other airlines, is all relatively the same anyway, except okay. if you hedge. Um, but from our perspective, look, it, it, fuel price goes up and down. Yeah, the market course. remains the same, which is it's competitive, and you need to compete effectively. Okay. Um, but it's, it's certainly a relief that fuel price is coming. Yeah. But, you know, who knows? Tomorrow it could be back up to $120. You yeah. never know. Exactly. Um, so fuel's a very large part of our, of our bill, of okay. our total bills, and mm -hmm. it is for most airlines up to 50%. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you can imagine a, a cost item within your budget, 50%, accounting for 50%, that you have no control over sometimes. No. Mm -hmm. But it is all relative. Um, okay. We enjoy the benefits of lower prices. Mm -hmm. they, everyone else enjoys the benefit, but equally, we also share the pain when the price goes up as well. Okay. And Stephen, I, I would suppose that you were part of this uh, LCC movement when it came, first came into you know, Asia yes. you know, 10 years ago. Mm. And uh, what were some of the you know, reactions that the customers had mm. when you were launching the first uh, LCC that you were associated with. Sure. Were they comfortable with, you know, uh, less space in between seats, mm. for example, mm. and then they have to pay for their meals mm -hmm. and drinks on board? Mm. I mean, what were some of the feedback that you got? Yeah, I think psychologically people have to be taken through a journey. And, yes, um, when <laughs> to be they, educated. Exactly, and when they're <laughs> used to having everything bundled together, their baggage or a meal or mm -hmm. even a TV, you know, yeah. you get the in-flight entertainment. That's what they're used to, mm. and then uh, they downgrade, and let's say they only pay a dollar for their <laughs> airfare, but they still expect that all of those things come along with the deal. Exactly. Um, so I think it's taken time to educate people. Certainly if you look at Singapore 10 years ago, mm -hmm. those pioneer LCCs that started okay. would have had these issues. Okay. Today it's a normal acceptance that, you know, this is, you, you pay, you get for what you pay, or no, pay for what you get. No. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so from that perspective, I think people understand the model. They'd much rather spend less on their airfare and spend more on their holiday or their end destination a better mm -hmm. hotel because they only have to put up with you know two or three hours or what yeah. have you so exactly. and it gives them choice as well it empowers them okay mm -hmm. and uh, what do you think you know f about the prospects in Taiwan mm -hmm. because you said 
it's only at the infancy stage. Yes. Uh, we only have two low-cost carriers. Yes. And then the, when people are starting you know, slowly mm. to know this, yeah. uh, the benefits, the, the attraction of low-cost carriers, mm. do you think this process is going to take longer mm -hmm. or maybe even shorter than other places? Um, if it's anything to do with our experience, shorter. Um, okay. we, we, we uplift a huge amount of Taiwanese to our destinations. We serve five destinations from Taiwan alone, and we serve Taipei and Kaohsiung. Okay. Our flights are full of Taiwanese. Yes. Um, they understand the model, they get the model, they understand their, their savings some dollars so they can mm. spend it elsewhere. Yes. And um, there's, even though you only have two local carriers, mm -hmm. there are many international carriers coming into Taiwan now, including Precisely. ourselves. Yes. So I, I, I personally believe it will happen faster than mm. every, uh, the, every Taiwanese I've met love a good deal. Okay, yes. <laughs> so I think from that perspective, I don't think, uh, I, I think uh, LCCs will certainly be a success in this market. Okay. Mm. And the last question before we end the first part of the sure. program, Stephen, do you think that maybe in the future, as you mentioned briefly, and mm -hmm. we're going to discuss this later in the sure. program, maybe in the future that LCCs will carry you know, passengers on longer flights, yes. you know, beginning with two, three hours mm -hmm. in duration, maybe in the future, seven, eight, 15, yes. 10 hours, even longer. Yes. So do you think that's the trend that we can expect? Absolutely, and we're already doing that. Um, some of our longest flights are over eight hours. Okay. Um, but what we do provide is, you know, someone who's like a backpacker who just wants to buy a seat and nothing else and save mm -hmm. the money, okay. they can do that. But someone who wants their creature comforts, in-flight entertainment, Wi-Fi, a larger seat and so forth, they okay. can pay for that if they wish to choose to. Okay. So their experience is no different mm -hmm. from, say, a full-service carrier, and I would argue sometimes even better okay. because they get the choice that they want. Okay. Stephen, let me ask you to start off the second part of the program. You know, why Singapore? You know, I mean, a lot of the low-cost carriers mm. started their operations, mm. you know, with a home office base in Singapore. Mm. Scoop is one of them. Mm. You know, you also mentioned, you know, Jetstar and others. Why Singapore? Is Singapore, uh, you know, becoming, you know, such a regional hub, mm. you know, for the low-cost carriers by choice, mm. or is it something just happened naturally? Okay. Um, there's actually five carriers based in Singapore. Okay. Um, so it's a very intense uh, exactly. uh, market for competition. Mm -hmm. uh, when you overlay that with the fact there's only about six million Singaporeans, <laughs> yeah, there's actually, right. you know, probably too many airlines. But um, the, the competitive nature of Singapore, the, the Singapore market is very open, of course. Um, um, as, as dictated by the government. Mm -hmm. um, and that really just allows, I suppose, um, a, a much easier setup of airlines and so forth. But also, Singapore has become just a natural hub for Asia. You know, people always talk about how good the airport is, the facilities, and naturally people want to pass through Singapore to an ongoing destination. So yeah. Australians passing Making through to go to Thailand. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it lends itself well as a, a fantastic facility for transfers, for an end destination, a city mm -hmm. break of two or three days. Yes. But really, it's, it really comes down to the, the business-friendly nature of the Singaporean mm -hmm. uh, uh, economy okay. uh, and being able to set up effectively and be able to compete effectively in the market. Okay. And the market is very competitive. Hugely. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, how do you then compete sure. with others? Um, so what's the niche for Scoot? The niche of Scoot basically is we're, we're more a medium to long haul carrier. So okay. we're talking about four to eight hours is our, is okay. our real sweet spot. All right. um, we have a different platform, I suppose. That's the best way I can argue, which is um, a Boeing 787. They're mm -hmm. wide body aircraft. They're aircraft you would typically associate with a full service carrier. Okay. And it's like, think of it like a small house, a big house. The bigger the house, the more features you can put in it. Of know? course. Like it, and that's what we do. It's a much bigger plane. So we have um, a, a premium cabin in terms of scoop beers. We mm. offer Wi Fi. We offer in seat power. We offer different seating products for people. Okay. So there's a lot more products on our aircraft than what you would typically associate with a, an LCC. It's a okay. lot more spacious. All right. Mm. And uh, given the fact that Singapore is also home to two, you know, full full service, service airlines. Mm -hmm. How do you then segment yourself sure. in the market? How do you draw the you know, differences? Draw the line? I, yes. I, I think people are transient. I think um, a, a mm -hmm. lot of people, they'll, they'll want full service carriers for a particular reason. Let's mm -hmm. say when they travel for business and their company is, is mm -hmm. supporting that. Okay. Um, but from our segment, we, we, we take all comers. We, we always say uh, we, we take the young and the young mm -hmm. at heart. But okay. from our perspective, um, depending on where we fly is different customer segments. If I okay. look at China, we mm -hmm. bring worker traffic down to Singapore who yes. work in Singapore. Mm -hmm. If I look at Taipei and mm -hmm. Taiwan, it's Singaporeans wanting to come to Holland in Taiwan because they love the place. Yes. So it really depends on the market and we, we, we have to deal with many customer segments um, mm. typically. But also don't forget that uh, a lot of the 
traffic um, that we get is is cheap and cheerful traffic. That's the okay. best way to, it, and it's it's really a volume game. We mm. we want to get as many people on our on our flights um, to a, to a yes. destination, and mm -hmm. we're able to do that simply because our aircraft carry 375 people. Mm, so okay. we, we we spread, um, I suppose, the, <laughs> the number of people over a lower cost base. Automatically, okay. you're able to accommodate lower fares. Okay, mm. and uh, you mentioned that the the core of your business. Mm. Our routes anywhere from four to eight, eight. hours, Correct. right? Yep, yep. And so most of the other LCCs will look at shorter Absolutely. routes, yep. two to three or yes. three and a half. Yes. And you, you know, schools came out with a, you know, for example, the fly from Singapore to Sydney, yes. which takes about seven and a half. Yes, it does. And uh, what's the, you know, angle on that? Sure. You know, I mean, do you think that? Is able to compete with other full-service airlines, or is it you ahead of the other LCCs? Uh, I'd like to say both. we're ahead of the other. I'd like to say both. <laughs> okay. Take the credit, but no. Right. Um, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, most LCCs typically are only say two to four hours, and that's yes. because the aircraft they fly only have that range. Okay, okay. they're smaller aircraft, mm -hmm. and um, they're just picking off regional destinations. Mm -hmm. For us, our real goal, uh, goal is long-haul travel and we believe okay. that the market's changed fundamentally. All right. Low-cost carriers have been in the market for over 10 years now, particularly in Asia. People are getting used to doing low-cost longer and longer and longer. Mm. But as I said, low-cost doesn't mean you need to trade down because no. we've got 787s and the products that they, the aircraft carries. Yes. The experience can probably sometimes be better than a full-service carrier, but you pay for what you want. That's yeah. the critical difference. So people are making an equation when they go on a long-haul trip to Australia mm. um, and they're making that informed choice but if I may give one example the constant story here is um, Singaporeans um, um, go to university in Australia a lot mm. and families who wanted to visit their children maybe of course could typically mm. only afford that maybe once a year in the past mm. because of scoot they're now going down three four times a year because they just pay for the airfare the seat mm. they economize they know their accommodation is taken care of when they stay with their child in Australia mm -hmm. but it gives them a chance to see their family more mm. and that's one way we've stimulated a new market that didn't exist previously okay mm. but before you came out with this longer routes yeah what were some of the risks involved that you have already foreseen Right. You know, for example, you need to compete mm. with other big boys, mm. you know, full service airlines. Mm. You know, how do you think, other than lower costs, how do you think would be, you know, would there be other, you know, risk uncertainties involved when you launched yeah. the longer routes? Absolutely. I mean, there's always uncertainties in life, <laughs> isn't there? But um, the focus for us was really on product, okay. um, making sure we had the right aircraft and making mm -hmm. sure that we had a product that appealed to people. Mm -hmm. And if I may give an example, um, okay. you're probably familiar with in-flight entertainment when you okay. fly a full-service carrier. Yes. We actually don't provide um, the old seat-back TVs no. or anything. No. If you look around our aircraft, everyone has an iPad or a phone or a laptop. So what we provide is we stream entertainment to someone's device. That saves anything up to one to two tons per plane. Of that course. would typically um, mm. mean that you have to burn more fuel. Yeah. And you're having to pay for it as a consumer anyway. Mm -hmm. So why would you pay for that if you're not interested? And a lot of people come with their own devices with movies preloaded. Oh, so just books. Exactly. And things, yeah. So so from that perspective, even that small example of efficiency and providing what you want, because mm -hmm. the market's moved. People yes. are now mobile, fully mobile. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what we really focused on is just providing what people want and making sure the product is appropriate. Okay. Mm -hmm. For all the LCC, you know, in the region, mm -hmm. what would you think would be some of the challenges that they all face, mm. you know, Scoot included? Mm. Is it going to be the competition mm. from, uh, you know, other full-service airlines? Yes. Or is it going to be some other things that you foresee? Competition's intense. And okay. we, we fly between, uh, mm -hmm. a good example would be Taipei Narita. Eight okay. airlines fly mm. between Taipei and Narita. I mean, that... You know, it's a huge amount of consumer choice. It's great for of the course. consumer. Yes. The competition is intense. Um, but I think it comes back to product um, because an LCC, if the only thing they've got is the price point, mm. um, it becomes a commodity, doesn't it? Yes. It, it doesn't become anything else. It's just a no. seat. And that's the area that we've invested most heavily in and we try to distinguish ourselves with. Mm. Um, so I think that's the biggest threat for a lot of LCCs and also full service carriers because mm -hmm. how often have you heard about full service carriers cutting service levels back because mm -hmm. they can't afford it or they're trying to compete with the LCCs? Okay. So you end up with a full service carrier that actually has the same experience as a low-cost carrier mm. a again they become a commodity oh. so for us it's really the focus on the product and trying to get that differentiation out in the marketplace mm. and an understanding to consumers okay mm. and we have mentioned earlier that this is a new 
business model in Taiwan. Yes. And then people are just now paying more and more attention yes. to LCCs, they are including the local ones. Mm. And uh, what do you think about the prospects here? Mm. Other than the fact that you mentioned earlier that people would like, you know, everyone, almost everyone in Taiwan would like to have a good deal. Yes. You know, anything they purchase. Absolutely. So, uh, I mean, other than that, what would be mm. some of the things that you think on the positive side sure. is going to help boost the market? Yeah. Uh, on the uncertain side, that, that people are not going to be so sure about whether the model is going to be successful. Yeah. I think the boosting of the market really comes from just people getting experience. Okay. Um, the, the biggest fear is, oh, a low-cost carrier, I, I don't know how that works, or okay. I don't know how I'm going to be treated. Okay. When they get on board, they actually realise the experience is good, if not better, than okay. the experiences they've had in the past, mm -hmm. and they realise the money they're saving, they can invest in their holidays. Yes. On the, I suppose, um, concern side is yeah. Taiwan doesn't have a big domestic market. No. Um, so, you know, you can fly from Taipei to Kaohsiung, but there's really not a, a huge domestic no. market. Mm -hmm. So on the... You also I, have high-speed rail. I the high, <laughs> and you have high-speed rail, so why yeah. do you need to fly? So yes. I, I think the restriction is more that um, low-cost carriers getting traffic rights to and from Taiwan to other destinations and so forth. Okay. Because it's not a common market, obviously. No. And mm -hmm. so that would be the... I suppose one of the key constraints to growth. Yes. Um, and you're already starting to see that happen as well. Yes, so exactly. Uh, from that perspective, I think that's probably the, the key issue going forward. All right. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I would imagine, you know, without you know having a lot of knowledge mm -hmm. about the, the airline industry, that all of you would like to be part of, it. you know, for example, the cross trade mm -hmm. routes. Mm -hmm. But that is something that goes beyond just the economics. Yes. So would you think that maybe in the future, when the sky is open? Mm. Will that you know bring a brand new chapter to the LCC carriers you know in Taiwan mm. uh, and as well as you know uh, in China? Yeah. they also have LCCs absolutely uh, flying you know back and forth. Absolutely. What do you think? I, I think it would be an absolutely bold step, but the, the okay. picture is bigger. Um, okay. It's not about the sixes of LCCs. It's no. about fundamentally changing the market that we operate within. Mm. If you look at the European Union and the mm. common skies that they had back in the 1990s, mm -hmm. it has fundamentally changed how Europe operates, yeah. both for full service carriers and low cost carriers. Mm -hmm. And the opportunity, the potential is phenomenal. Mm. Um, and it's something I hope I see in my own lifetime, <laughs> yes, I'm sure yours as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it makes common sense. You can see many markets that have gone like this, but obviously Europe is the doyen or the, mm -hmm. the, the one that we idolize. Okay. If that could only happen here, the, the, okay. the Economic implications are fantastic, absolutely yes. fantastic. And finally, Stephen, I want to ask you, you've been in the airline industry for 19 years. Too long. Too long, <laughs> yes. And uh, you've seen, you know, how people's mentality, you know, your frame, you know, frame of mind mm. changes, mm. you know, with the convenience in transportation. Mm. If, for example, years ago, you probably would not imagine that you can make a one-day trip from Taipei to Shanghai mm. and back. Mm. But now it's a reality. Absolutely. A lot of people are doing that. Absolutely. So would you think, you know, just as a seasoned airline executive, mm. do you think that more and more LCC will help accelerate mm. the changes that you see in people's mentality, mm -hmm. in their, you know, your frame of mind? Mm. Um, I lived in Europe um, for okay. a number of years, just at the time the low-cost carrier phenomenon was starting to boom in Europe. Okay. And I'll tell you what happened. Um, what you would have as a family, and they would have one trip a year or a couple, yes. that one big holiday a year to Spain mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. but that would be it. Okay. And overnight, the behaviour fundamentally changed, where they sat there and went, you know what, I'm going to take a city break to Paris yeah. or to Amsterdam for two days. Yeah. I'm just going to go because it's just cheap and go come for back the and yes. I don't have to take any days off and I'm going to do four, five, maybe even six yeah. of those a year. Yes. So the behaviour fundamentally changes so okay. I personally think that in Taiwan you know people won't think twice of going to Tokyo uh, for the weekend no because it's cheap yeah. and you, you can do it convenient absolutely yes. why not okay Steve let's talk a little bit about the uh, you know the local market mm. in Taiwan we mentioned earlier that this is an emerging business model yeah you know a lot of people now paying more attention to LCCs in Taiwan and we also have two local LCCs, mm -hmm. you know, both from the local airline, full service airline, mm. TransAsia and mm -hmm. also China Airline. Mm -hmm. And given the fact that Scoot is also fairly new in mm. town, mm -hmm. it's, you know, like you said, a very important market for you, but how do you then plan to compete mm. with the local LCCs? You know, when they may have a niche over you in terms of the knowledge of the market, in terms of the familiarity with the customers, sure. you know, with the services they offer in the past. Mm -hmm. So how do you plan to compete with them? 
Uh, just like we compete with every other airline, <laughs> oh, okay. there's a lot out there. But okay. um, we've actually been operating to Taiwan longer than those two airlines have existed. Okay. Um, yes. So we've been operating for almost three and a half years now. Okay. Um, I'd like to think we know a fair bit about the Taiwanese market. We mm, have our own people here on the ground as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but really, as I said, it comes down to the product differentiation. Again, we, we, we are a standalone airline that's operating mm -hmm. 787s and a much better product in, in our mind. Mm -hmm. um, but also, it's the way we distribute in the market as well. We okay. work with travel agencies. We distribute online as well. Okay. So we really try to tackle a, a range of customer segments or guest segments okay. to be able to get them to come and join us and to fly with us. So mm -hmm. um, it's worked well for the past three and a half years. Um, Taiwan is one of our most successful markets. Our flights mm -hmm. are always over 80% full. Which is always Thanks to you and your staff. I, I, would, I would like to take credit, but I think, I think it's my staff. But um, okay. yeah, so I, Taiwan has been an incredibly successful market for us. So I think, we, I think we're getting it right, but there's still a lot more to do. Okay. Mm. And uh, a lot of people, when they you know, hear about LCCs, mm. you know, the thing they're going to say is that, hey, I know the airline tickets are cheaper, yep. uh, but uh, you know, I get fewer benefits, mm -hmm. you know, fewer services. Mm -hmm. And then uh, most importantly for some people, they're not quite sure about the safety mm. of LCCs. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a justifiable mm -hmm. you know, concern, mm. but can you tell us a little bit, what do LCCs in general, mm -hmm. and what does Scoot in particular, mm -hmm. try to ease the concerns sure. that people may have over safety issues? Okay. Um, uh, to, to say straight out, yeah. um, I, I, I think that perception is, is wrong. Okay. Um, we... Um, can't determine what, how we fly or what we do or mm -hmm. how we go about training. Okay. It is determined for us by the Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore. Okay. And those rules, though, mm. that legislation, not only do we need to abide by, but all of the other airlines in Singapore. We're lucky that we uh, operate out of Singapore. It is mm -hmm. a respected authority in terms of the, yes. the aviation authority. And full service carriers, low cost carriers have to abide by the same principles. Okay. We go one step further. Um, a lot of our training is done by Singapore Airlines. So our, our cool. flight crew and so forth are trained mm -hmm. at Singapore Airlines facilities mm -hmm. to Singapore Airlines standards. Um, our aircraft are maintained by Singapore Airlines Engineering Company. So there's a lot of things that we have in common with our, I, I suppose, our parent airline as well. Mm -hmm. But the fundamental um, uh, point, though, is that mm -hmm. from a regulatory perspective, we must abide by a common standard that applies to all airlines. Okay. It's not as if low-cost carriers can somehow ignore cut or cut corners or, or what have you. We simply wouldn't be allowed to fly, and that's, okay. that's a fact. Right. So um, uh, I, I can assure your, your, <laughs> uh, your viewers that uh, we, we are absolutely compliant with the local Take authority very of Singapore, seriously. and we very much do so. Yes, and uh, given the fact that you know, a lot of people like myself, mm. you know, we do travel, sure. you know, not just for you know, personal you know, purposes, mm. but also for business reasons. Sure. And uh, what will be some of the general guidelines mm. that you can give us sure. in terms of how should we, you know, be concerned about a particular carrier's mm -hmm. safety, about their maintenance, about some of the things that we read about in the papers? Mm. What will be some of the, you know, the quote unquote, the right questions for <laughs> us to have? Okay. I, go, go, I, I go by my own abiding principles, which okay, is basically which is, understand who you're traveling with, um, right. make sure they're well financed, make sure they're well run, okay. uh, and then make your own determination about, mm -hmm. about that. But okay. really, it, it, it really become, it comes down to the competency of the airline. And how you define that is up to an individual, but mm -hmm. um, you know, it comes down to how well run the airline is, how well backed it is in terms of financing and, exactly. and so forth as well. Okay. Does it have new aircraft? All of our aircraft, our, average, our fleet of aircraft is less than one year old. Um, you know, so are they well maintained? Who are they impressive. maintained by? Yes. So mm -hmm. all of these factors must come into play at the end of okay. the day, um, right. and you make your own, your own individual determination. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, another aspect goes back to the point mm -hmm. that you raised earlier about efficiency. Yeah. Is that people who travel on LCCs generally make reservation online yes. directly with the you know the airline company? Yes. So do you think that's a very efficient way, of course, you would imagine so, that it also gives the customers, as you mentioned, mm. you know, the freedom yes. of choices, yeah. you know, adding on the services when they need them mm -hmm. and then not taking on additional costs when they don't. Yeah. So do you think that Internet you know, has basically changed not just the landscape for LCCs, but also for tourism mm -hmm. industry, for hospitality mm -hmm. industry? 
So what do you think? Um, the travel industry is one of the biggest sectors online by yes. far in terms mm. of sheer turnover, volume mm -hmm. of turnover and so forth because it lends itself well to the internet. Okay. 20, 30 years ago, I don't think many travellers would have dreamed of uh, booking their own flight and no. then booking their own <laughs> hotel because you wouldn't have known where to start. It was very hard to get information. Mm -hmm. And it was really travel agents who had all that information at their fingertips. And that's, exactly. you know, that's the reason why most people travelled. Now everything is at your fingertips. You know, you can go to TripAdvisor and you can check out what the best hotel mm -hmm. is in so-and-so place or what mm -hmm. have you. Mm -hmm. you. You can easily move around and shop for inventory, check different airlines, check different hotels, activities, mm -hmm. all of these things. Okay. And so the internet more than anything else has empowered people. They've mm -hmm. empowered people, they've got the choice and they can now deal directly with suppliers. So okay. um, that said, though, I mean, you know, we, we deal with the trade and we deal with the internet as well. Uh -huh. you know, it, I, I still think there's a, a, a mix, okay. um, but certainly on, on the internet side and direct sell, it's just about empowerment and people are making their own choices. When they go to Tokyo, they, they've already got the hotel. They know what they want to go and stay at. They've mm -hmm. just got to get the airfare and then they're on their own. You know, yes. they, they, they do things themselves. They have their freedom. Absolutely. Yes. And Stephen. When we talk about internet, of course, it's very convenient, mm. it's very accessible for the average people. Mm. But also at the same time, we've heard, you know, newspaper reports mm -hmm. about, you know, for example, a certain uh, LCC doing a promotion, a yep. uh, very cheap fare mm. from Taipei to Sing uh, uh, Tokyo mm -hmm. to Singapore and things. And then, the, you know, when it first, you know, started allow, you know, allowing people to make a reservation mm. online, then the you know the you know internet will crash. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know that has happened. Yes. All right, and then the, not just to LCCs, but with others as sure. well. Yeah. Our government uh, earlier this year were offering incentives for people to travel. Yeah. You know, within Taiwan. Oh, really? And okay. then the, they will give subsidies and yep. things, but <laughs> that also crashed yeah. within two hours. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. So mm. yeah, it's not something <laughs> unique with the LCCs. But when that happens, mm. what do LCCs in general will try to accommodate mm. the influx yep. of tremendous volume mm. of requests, reservation, you know, plans and things? How, how, how can you accommodate that? Yeah, I mean, we have, uh, we have a phenomenon called Takeoff Tuesdays, and we run, we run <laughs> yes. a sale every Tuesday at okay. exactly the same time. All right. And people know it. Um, and without fail, every week we do that at okay. 7 o'clock in the morning. And... Um, we've Does it happen? It, it not, well, you know, it has happened, but not on, okay. that, not on that sale. But okay. we, we've got so much experience now and so much bandwidth that you know, we, we try to accommodate. But sometimes a sale is just in, incredibly successful and it, mm. you know, it does crash, but yeah. <laughs> hope, thankfully not too often. <laughs> Typically when it's happened in the past, what we'll do is we'll extend the sale. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll come back to uh, consumers and basically say, look, we know you haven't been able to book or you haven't had okay. the chance to book the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And it's not so much the crash that okay. people complain about. It's, 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 I just wanted the fair. Yes. I really just wanted the fair. Can you get, can I get the opportunity yeah. like everyone else to get if to that you fair? Extend it. And that's what we do. Yeah. We typically extend the sale period so people okay. can get that opportunity. All right. Mm. Finally for this part of the program, sure. Stephen, what is the most common complaint mm. that LCCs and Scoot in particular mm -hmm. have received mm -hmm. from customers, from passengers? Mm -hmm. uh, do they complain about you know, additional cost mm -hmm. uh, that's a little more than the, what they expected? Mm -hmm. And, or do they cost, you know, complain about you know, the, the food that they bought on board is not, you know, uh, delicious enough <laughs> things, all right? So what, what, what will be some of the things that people are complaining about? It, it depends on the country you're talking about. I mean, okay. I, I, I know Taiwanese love their food, but Singaporeans particularly love their food. So, they, okay. so if they're not happy with the food, they'll complain. But okay. um, I think it's more than anything else, I think it's actually terms and conditions. Okay. Um, uh, um, how often have you ever gone through and purchased, it doesn't need to be an airfare, but anything, and actually gone through and read through the terms and conditions and no. understand what your obligations are as a Not very often. <laughs> Not very often. <laughs> yes. And that typically where, that, that's where the misunderstanding comes from. That, okay. um, you know, people must, and we've always said this, must read the terms and conditions, understand what they're responsible for and also the airlines are responsible for. Mm -hmm. And therefore these type of disputes simply won't come about. No. But it is a fact, I mean, our terms and conditions like any other LCC, it's a little bit tougher in terms mm -hmm. of a little bit more restrictive. Okay. But again, our argument is as long as you understand what those are and what okay. they mean to you, mm -hmm. then that shouldn't be an issue. 
Okay, mm. so if I'm the first time traveler mm. Mm. going on, you know, Scoot or mm. other LCCs, mm. what would be some of the things that you would remind me mm. before I make the reservation, sure. before I make my plans for, yeah. you know, for the travel? Yeah, I, I really, I really think this. Do your research. That's okay. that's the first and foremost. Do your research and. By law, we're obliged to provide certain amount of information about certain things, the terms okay. and conditions and everything. So it's yes. all there for you to consume. Okay. Take your time. All right. Take your time and do your research and understand what those obligations are. Mm -hmm. And also understand the price breakdown. Understand what money is going to the government as taxes, what, okay. money, what money you're paying for an airfare <laughs> right. and everything else in between. But okay. research, research, research. That's the, that's the key element to whatever yeah. travel you undertake, be it full service or low cost. It sounds like a great advice. Yeah. David. You have been the you know airline industry for about 19 years, going to 20, and 10 of which you have spent with the LCCs. Mm. Can you share with us some of the more interesting stories that you have come across? I'm sure there are plenty, uh, but just give us one or two. I don't please. know if they're appropriate for TV, but um, <laughs> okay. no. I mean, I, I, I think I've been lucky enough that I've been in a number of carriers, starting those carriers from nothing. And okay. When I started with Scoot, we didn't even have a photocopier. I remember walking in and there, was, there wasn't even furniture. Okay. Um, but I, I think the stories that sort of resonate in my mind over the years, particularly as mm -hmm. my, my experience with startups, is okay. the stories you get from passengers. I remember when we first started operating from the Gold Coast uh, oh. with Scoot, mm -hmm. uh, someone coming up to me, a retiree and 70, first time he's ever been overseas. And oh, okay. he said to me, I typically I would never be able to afford this, but I wanted to celebrate my wedding anniversary, my 40th or 50th wedding anniversary with my wife. And, you know, you've enabled me to go and travel. You've enabled me to, to do that. And that for me, I think, is a, it's a rewarding moment because you've, yes. you've, you've, very you've stimulated a new yes. market. You've, mm -hmm. you've given people the opportunity and the chance to go. Mm. But I think the other things are, um, you know, Scoot will long live out, uh, long outlive me and, and, and so forth. And I can always look back and know that the uniforms, they were, you know, I yeah. helped design those. Yeah, the, you were part of the, the process. I was process. part of that process. So I can take some of it and I know that some of my DNA is in, in Scoot as well. So uh, that for me is important as well. So, okay. but yeah, but there's so many stories. It's, uh, I've been very lucky and fortunate, I think. All right. And mm. uh, I have also done some research. Sure. I understand that within Scoot, mm -hmm. there's that concept of Scooter Tube. Yes. All right. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit about what's behind the concept? Sure. What does it really entail? Sure. Please. I think the definition of scooter tube really comes down to the individual. If you ask me what my definition is versus perhaps yeah. my colleagues, they would say different things. Okay. But really, it's, it's an attitude. Okay. It's, it's an attitude that we bring to the business mm -hmm. and how we go about our business. And it's not prescriptive. We don't okay. want to write a rule book down and say, you have to smile now, do this there, mm -hmm. bow, etc. We allow people freedom to express themselves, and okay. that's the key thing. And that happens on board with our cabin crew, to our pilots, but also in the head office as well. You can see that in terms of our marketing. We, mm -hmm. we don't take ourselves too seriously. No. Uh, we try okay. to have a bit of fun. Of course. Uh, even if it's at, at our expense, no big deal. It doesn't mm -hmm. worry me. And as you can see, we're relatively casual as well. Yeah, so from that, from that perspective. But scooter scooter comes down to the individual, what they define it as and how that manifests itself mm -hmm. in the work environment. Okay. Uh, what is important for a business to be successful and mm -hmm. stay mm -hmm. successful is to attract the quality people that you want. Yeah. So do you think the concept of Scooter is really an you know, attraction mm -hmm. to a lot of the younger people who might be interested working for an airline mm. or working for an LCC? Mm. Is this something that given them the freedom, yeah. the latitude, the attitude, mm. you know, they're able to express their way of serving the you know passengers mm. and working with the colleagues mm. with a little bit of discretion on yeah. their side? Absolutely. Yeah, so you think that's a added attraction to people? Well, I, I overdress today. I'm usually wearing, I'm usually wearing shorts, <laughs> shorts from the office and, and a T-shirt. Yes, <laughs> yes or no, if you're lucky. But okay. the, the, uh, the key thing is, I think, you know, we, we have to attract a lot of younger people, particularly mm. for cabin crew and so forth. Mm -hmm. They appreciate that freedom to express themselves, be it the okay. colour of their hair to their nails to whatever. Precisely. Um, it's not prescriptive and they, no. they want to be able to do that. In terms of the head office and so forth, yes, it's, 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 we're moving away from that corporate stuffy environment. Okay. Okay. We want to be a startup. We want to be akin to an internet startup. Oh, okay. We want to attract talent, people who want to be there because it's cool to be there. It's yes. fun to be there mm -hmm. uh, rather than being in your little cubicle and you can't say anything or you can't express yourself. Okay. Mm. And uh, we want to talk to you a little bit about that service that mm. Scoot offers, mm. so-called Scoot in Silence. Yes. And this is the, the, you know, the cabin yeah. that you don't sell tickets 
to people 12 and under. Yes. Uh, what, what's the rationale for doing sure. this? Sure. Uh, because you, know, you have a lot of people travel on Scoot mm -hmm. and other LCCs mm. you know, for family reasons, mm -hmm. you know, family vacations, you know, you know, reunions, anniversaries and things. Mm -hmm. And uh, they bound to have young kids. Mm -hmm. Uh, so do you think among the passengers on Scoot, mm. there is that increasing demand mm. that people don't want to be disturbed, mm -hmm. uh, people want to be in solitude and uh, away from the uh, <laughs> baby crying and things. Sure. So, you know, what's the concept? Um, it, it, the concept is basically that we, we have such large planes, we, okay. we can offer so many different products. Okay. We have a premium um, uh, Scoot Biz product, okay. we have Scoot in Silence, we have the normal cabin. So there's plenty of choice for families. All right. The Scoot in Silence cabin has really come mm. about from just feedback from our guests basically saying, look, you know, I just want a, I want a quiet place to work or I want a quiet place uh, uh, mm -hmm. away from families or, or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. It's their right just as uh, other right for families to be sitting in certain places as well. Okay. So we're really just trying to provide products that consumers are asking for. Mm -hmm. um, and Scoot and Silence is a fantastic cabin. I, I actually prefer flying in that, in that cabin myself, but it's only a small cabin right behind Scoot Biz um, that just provides that degree of intimacy, I suppose, and that mm -hmm. quietness that people sometimes looking for, particularly business travelers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you then share with us, mm -hmm. you know, without giving everything away, <laughs> what's in store? for Scoot in the year 2016. Mm -hmm. We already know that you're starting your flights to the Middle East yes. as a longer route. Yep. And uh, how about in addition to the Middle East? Yep. Any other places that you're thinking of? Yeah, I, I left my crystal ball back in Singapore. <laughs> okay. No, no. Um, uh, we're going to grow by about 50% this year in terms of capacity. Good. So Good. Uh, another huge year in terms of growth. Mm -hmm. uh, you're right, we're going to Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. Um, okay. Uh, that will start uh, hopefully in, in May of this year, so mm -hmm. right somewhere. A couple of extra destinations in China mm -hmm. um, and a few more other destinations in India as well. We haven't okay. been to India yet, so we're looking at about two or three there as well. Okay. So some big expansion plans this year, and we also have Taiwan on the cards. Um, we're looking to add incremental frequencies to Taiwan and one more destination. So currently we serve five destinations from Taiwan. We're looking mm. to go to six. Okay. I can't tell you because I no. think my CEO would kill of me course. otherwise. Yes. Um, but hopefully within the next two months we'll be able to make that announcement. So Taiwan is definitely still one of our preeminent destinations. All right. Um, and our Kaohsiung service is going incredibly well. Uh, we have three times a week from Singapore up to Osaka and we're looking to increase that as well. Okay. Mm. And uh, I'm sure that Stephen, maybe a lot of young people that are watching our program today mm -hmm. and thinking that, hey, like you said, it's cool to be part of Scoot. Absolutely. And uh, tell us, mm. Stephen, you know, as head of commercial, sure. what would be some of the qualities mm -hmm. or personality traits mm -hmm. that you're looking for, mm -hmm. or Scoop is looking for, sure. in terms of people who might be interested in joining your operation. Sure. Oh, it's, it's, it's the old adage, recruit for attitude and yes. train for skill, isn't it, yes, in many sir. ways. And mm -hmm. um, we actually have a lot of Taiwanese people working for us, particularly in crew and, mm -hmm. and, and pilots and so forth as well. Okay. But first and foremost, it's really, it's really the attitude, the can-do attitude. As mm -hmm. I said, we're a startup. We're only a couple of years old. Yeah. We really need people to be able to take what we've built thus far to the next level. And mm -hmm. it's that perseverance and attitude and just, uh, uh, I suppose, positivity that we're looking for in people mm -hmm. to really take the dream that we've started and carry it on. Okay. Um, and, you know, the skill set, we look for a huge, broad amount of skill set. We don't okay. look particularly in my area, we don't look for people who have got airline experience. I want to take people from FMCG, I want to mm -hmm. take people from retailing, all of these to, pro uh, I suppose, bring in and provide different experiences to Scoot so we can truly be a game changer in the market. Okay, mm. and uh, given the fact that, that the market competition is very intense, yes. you have you know, many other LCCs yeah. and also full service airlines. Mm. So what is the plan for uh, Scoot mm. in, the, in the future to try to brand your services. Mm. So make sure that you know more and more people in the future when they think about flying on LCCs, yeah. they think of you know flying Scoot mm -hmm. as one of the first choices Absolutely. that will come to their mind. Uh, what would be something that you want to do in terms of branding your mm. services? Mm. You know, in addition to what you mentioned, yeah. you're offering more routes, yeah. longer routes, you know, and giving people the freedom mm. to choose the services they want. Mm -hmm. You know, what are the some of the other things that you think may be helpful mm -hmm. in terms of creating that brand image mm -hmm. as good as Singapore Airlines is? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Singapore Airlines is, you know, they're obviously known for a, a premium full service experience. Of and, course. And, and that's, that's undeniable mm -hmm. uh, around the world. 
For us, I think it's really pitched at the, uh, as we've always said, the young and the young at heart. Okay. We want to be relevant to pretty well the mass. We want to be relevant to pretty well everyone. And we want people to understand that we're fun, we're youthful, mm -hmm. and we do provide something different. And you can okay. see that in the tonality of our marketing, the, the, the brightness, the, the, the vitality. And I think people get that. They, they come across, and Scoot's not your typical airline name, is it? No. I mean, it's not something airways. It's just Scoot. Um, mm -hmm. It's meaning to move forward. It's about motion. So mm -hmm. I think people get it. I think people are starting to understand that we are something different, mm -hmm. uh, that we are representing something different within the marketplace, a, a different flavour, I suppose, okay. of an airline. Oh, yeah. And people are looking for that. People know th the commodity-based LCC model and sort mm -hmm. of not much, nothing much breaks through. No. Mm -hmm. and they sort of come to Scoot and go, this actually is different. There is okay. something here that is significantly different from others. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked earlier about some of the more common complaints mm -hmm. that you have heard sure. at, you know, Scoot. How about some of the more common compliments mm -hmm. that you have received from passengers mm. on your flights? Mm. And what would be the most satisfying part when you get those compliments? Mm. Well, you know, when they offer you, for example, oh, you have wonderful service, the food was excellent, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it was, the flight was a lot more pleasant, a lot more you know, you know, uh, shorter than mm. I expected. What, what would be some of the things as a... 19-year veteran, mm -hmm. you know, would be most you know, satisfying to you? Um, this personal ones, which is, you know, we've carried over 6 million people within yes. the space of just over three and a half years. Yeah. That in itself is an achievement uh, mm -hmm. and a pat on the back. And we've done that safely and we've done that efficiently okay. and at really low fares. Um, but from a consumer's perspective, I always enjoy the, the comments when people walk on our planes. The first thing they notice is the ambience, the difference, the large aircraft, the, the, yes. the spaciousness. Mm -hmm. And you typically get that. People just walk on and go, wow, actually this is really <laughs> different. Not something what we expected. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And then, you know, you get the compliments about the crew and all of these type of things. All of the things that you've had, you know, you've touched mm -hmm. or you've, you've helped or you've mm -hmm. developed or what have you. Um, but I think it's, it's, it's really, it's always about the silent majority, isn't it? You never hear compliments that much. People, no. <laughs> as people are just satisfied as long as they get to A to B and everything works and everything is good. Mm. And as long, I, I always say, as long as it's peaceful on the, on the Western front, we're <laughs> all good, I'm all, I'm all happy. Okay. So, yes. But I, I think it, for me, it's, it's really a numbers game. It's, it's how many people we've carried efficiently and safely in such a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. And the growth potential, as I said, we're growing 50% this year. And mm -hmm. we welcome millions more passengers and we keep on growing and people okay. keep on coming and wanting to fly us. And that right. to me is in itself a validation of what we're doing. All right, Stephen, we have about one minute left. Sure. I'm gonna give you the one last question. Far away. Which is, if you had the choice to choose between full service airline mm -hmm. and low cost carrier, mm. as an employee, what would be some of the pros and cons for each? Mm -hmm. And would you have, you know, spent 10 years with the LCCs mm -hmm. as you did before? Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, the, the pros and cons, I, I, I think LCCs are more youthful. LCCs okay. are probably a little bit more relevant to me yeah. in terms and of the more product. More challenging as yeah, well. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. more, and more challenging because you've got to do more with less. Yes. You know, you're starting from nothing. You haven't mm -hmm. been around for 50 years. No. You don't have this historical legacy mm -hmm. um, that other carriers do. Okay. So it's really starting from nothing going, well, how do I yeah. get this up in the air? I yeah. mean, we started the, the project with Scoot um, and it took us 10 months, only mm -hmm. 10 months to get our first flight up in the air to Sydney. Okay. And so to go so, from nothing where we didn't have anything yes, in, the, in the business to actually... That a, is a huge achievement yeah, in itself. And it, yes. and we were flying and we were flying safely and yes. everything was working. Um, yeah. You know, that in itself is, a, is, is phenomenal in my all mind. Right. Good. Stephen, it's been wonderful to have you on the program today. I want to wish you all the best in your personal and professional endeavors in the future. Thank you Thank very you. much. Appreciate right. it. No problem. I'll see you next time on Macroview Television. Thank you. Mm -hmm.